All right, guys. Uh, on the on the uh, forum at Flexor Exchange, our friend DSM says that they're in the process of creating a sign-off checklist, right? And they want some feedback to see what others are using. So I, I thought I'd take this opportunity to uh, just build one with you guys real quick and uh, talk a little bit about how they evolve and how you might use them. Okay, this is my first. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open a new Excel. I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to call it, uh, I'm going to put it in a folder. And we're going to call that uh, checklist, okay? All right. And then this checklist is going to be uh, sign off. Now, I'm going to work in Excel very quickly or you know just naturally for me I'm not going to explain what I'm how I do or anything or any shortcuts or anything like that if you guys have any question about that stuff I'll be happy to help you out okay all right so we're going to build a uh, we're going to build a sign off checklist for narrow web labels okay so maybe we have more than one operation in our organization and we'll just say labels okay there might be uh, you know over here we might do bags okay All right, so let's come back to labels. Now I'm going to try to work in a natural flow and say, what are the items that I need checking? All right. Well, uh, let's see. On the work order with a job jacket, uh, you, uh, and co out comes a work order, and also comes a history folder that shows how the job was set up last time and has a bunch of variables populated with it. Right. So we'll just say item number matches history folder okay so you're going to uh, make sure that <clears throat> you check the item number on the work order and that the history folder that came out with it uh, matches all right so let's see what else might we do the work order matches the stock the uh, raw material requisition Requisition sheet, right? All colors are clearly indicated. You know, you'd be surprised. Sometimes work orders come out and they don't—they don't show all the colors, or they'll say red and they don't say 485 red, for example. Uh, a, a, a proof—you need a proof to go right, right? So there should be an approved proof, or uh, you know, or sample if it's a new product to go by, right? So you're confirming that with this with that with this package of, of materials, there's an approved proof or sample to go by. Okay. Now sometimes folks say varnish. They just say varnish, apply varnish. Well, you know what type of varnish is it? Uh, so varnish type explicit. For example, is it matte satin gloss? Is it UV? Is it aqueous? You know, it needs to be explicitly stated on the uh, work order documents, okay? Are the correct dyes indicated? Right? Uh, you know, you're going to take a quick check and make sure that the correct dye is indicated on there, a dye that matches up. There's a way to, you know, we, we happen to have, let's say, an easy way to do that cross check. Does the dye match the plate cylinder? You know, you should the plate cylinder should have the same amount of teeth as the die or vice versa the die should have the same number of teeth as a die or a number that works out you know what I mean sometimes you have to really study it like it may, you may have a cylinder that's two around and a die that's three around right so you have to do a little math and figure out does it match you know or are they gonna be in phase right this may or may not be a check you do once you know that the label the dies are correctly matched with products is the width correct? Right? And now the width, we're talking about, uh, you know, the width of the label. So let's say label width correct, okay? So label, label width, is the label, label width correct, right? And then we also ask ourselves, is the label length correct? Individual labels at this point, okay? Um... So what you know, <clears throat> the, you know, the, uh, does the operator, you know, his, this is a, an operator bringing to a supervisor uh, a checklist 
and a sample and the work order and all that stuff and the supervisor sitting down there with the operator to check all this stuff okay so what we're gonna have here is you know we're gonna have the operator or the op right and over here we're gonna have the soup and these are gonna be two uh, columns that we're gonna have for these guys for example like this that are actually gonna be check boxes right okay so we're gonna make these check boxes alright just for example okay you get the idea we'll evolve this a little bit further so is the label length correct you know uh, the correct number of sides printed you'll be surprised sometimes you have you know a special uh, eye spot or something like that or a bar printed on the back and the operator will forget that you know the, the correct number of sides printed uh, you know is it perforated right sometimes you have a perforation and in, in something that's sheeted but it has perfs within there or some strange configuration you need to make sure that the perfs are there. It's not always obvious. Is it scored? You know, check the score, right? Should it be stripped? All right, make sure, make sure it's stripped, and actually check the quality of that stripping, right? Is it stacked? You know, is it you know is this product a stacked product or not? What quantity? How many? I you know how many sheets per stack, for example, right? So is it sheeted? And I guess whoops. I guess actually, if we we should ask first if, if it's sheeted and then whether it's stacked, right? Uh, is the sheet size precise? So you know, if the operator is supposed to cut it into a sheet, he's bringing sheets. You know, does it measure the correct sheet size? And that should be on the uh, work order, and you should measure it to make sure it does, especially the width, right? If it's roll stuff, is the wind direction correct? All right, you may have to uh, you may have to go out there as uh, as a supervisor actually at press and um, make sure that the wind direction of that roll is coming off the press correctly, and make sure that the wind is also explicitly stated on the work order document before you even send that stuff out to the press. All right, is the stock correct? Okay, you might um, look at the uh, or label that came on the roll. Okay, in this case it would be pressure sensitive. You might look at the label and make sure that the uh, that the uh, that the substrate identification number or product number or SKU matches uh, what's called for on the work order. Okay, by number, it should be a very very direct relationship there. Okay, uh, you know, does a the, does a substrate requisition match the work order? Okay, uh, as a matter of fact, you can even do ink. Ink requisition. Ah, forget about ink. Let's not do ink. Okay. All right. Let's do a quick spell check here. I know we got some uh, dies. No, we're going to leave that. Or we're going to leave that. Substrate requisition. Clear. Position. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. You know, does the substrate requisition ma match the work order? Because there's a substrate requisition that goes to the material handler when this uh, order starts to get staged and that sort of thing. So the supervisor is making sure that the requisition matches the work order. Correct material, correct quantity, all that stuff. And you may even have a calculator that calculates that the correct footage is indicated on there. Okay? So let's say correct footage. Correct footage. Uh... You know, you'll be surprised. Sometimes there's a wrong number put in the uh, in the ERP or MRP system, and the correct and incorrect footage could come out. So sometimes, either with a calculator or a spreadsheet or something like that, you could pop in a few things like the uh, the uh, number of teeth on a cylinder and this sort of thing, and pop, you calculate the correct footage for the number of, of uh, impressions and that sort of thing. So you want to do a quick check because you'd hate to print not enough or way too much in some cases when that little internal number is incorrect the amount of consumption of the material per unit label or whatever if that's incorrect you can get in big trouble all right so is the you know is uh f footage correct right uh what else is the count yeah well actually we could call that correct footage they call some people call it counter reading okay is the uh stock width width correct okay that's similar to the um, correct 
uh, sheet, sheet size precise especially with so let's go ahead and pop that in there and so we'll check up there if the stock width is correct is this fan folded right uh, if it's fan folded make sure it's being fan folded okay sometimes an operator can forget to to hook up the fan folder or something like that just whoops uh, uh, special instructions you know at this point uh, both the press operator uh, and the supervisor uh, review any special instructions or they're prompted to do that so they don't overlook it you know sometimes people just don't look I try to tell Shannon that all the time people do not read okay so uh, this prompts them to look at the instructions uh, you know what else uh, is the history that come out came out with if this ran uh, before make sure you know that all of the previous variables were populated and that sort of thing so you're going to do a quick check of the history and make sure it uh, it uh, is complete and as a matter of fact I'm going to cut that out and put it up there and work order up uh, history folder right there mm -hmm. insert so after you checked whether the number matched the history folder you can check if the history is complete right and then uh, uh, and the ink matches history okay look at the hi job history and make sure that you know the ink that's called for and all that is consistent with what's on the job history because sometimes an order can come out with a certain uh, <clears throat> set of instructions especially when a job is new and then the operator does something to the ink or modifies it or something like that so now the ink no longer matches or, uh, the comments on the work order so this this is an opportunity to make sure that any changes that were made to the ink formula or anything like that were translated to this new work order that's coming out to the floor okay so now we're just gonna go ahead and drag down a, a grid of this over here so this is you know let's make it a little wider this is the operator and supervisor signing off on each one of these numbers right and they might put a check in here you know first the supervisor the, the operator checks each one of these things and so does the supervisor okay so now what you might then do here is put a, uh, you know, uh, let's see, we might say date, order, right, and then uh, we'll have a couple of sign-offs here. We'll have, uh, else. we'll have uh, supervisor, initials, operator, initials right so both of these guys are, uh, are, are you know are liable for or not liable but held accountable for this right so uh, date time that might be helpful we'll do that maybe write justify this here okay and then put some uh, bars there yeah okay do that like that right give it a little bit wider Maybe make this a little bit taller. Give it a little room. See what that looks like when you're gonna print it. Looks pretty good. Uh -uh. Okay. So now, oh, it's gonna print on two pages here. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that it only prints on one page. Okay. So let's see what that looks like. Okay. That's more better. Okay. It looks pretty good. I don't even have to reformat that or anything like that, right? I might give this form a name. Uh, so let me see, header or footer, and what do I call that? Uh, labels, right? That's good. Okay, so that's the label sheet. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna have one for uh, bags later. Okay, so I save that, and so now I have a checklist. Okay, now this checklist. Let's do something real quick here. Uh, not sure the uh, grid lines. Okay. Okay. See that looks a lot nicer, right? It's a lot cleaner. Okay, so uh, this thing here will evolve. You might decide that it's more logical to have a certain check be performed before another check because that check could render everything else uh, useless to even look at. Okay, so for example, if the uh, if the uh, stock is not correct, right? If the stock is not correct, uh, cut. Uh, you know, uh, 
you know, why check the color? Why check anything? You know, once you decide that the stock on that sample is incorrect, it's time to stop and start printing on the correct stuff before you do any other of, the, of these other checks, right? So that's one way this thing may evolve. Another th way this thing may evolve is that we may then just let's see. Let's see if we view uh, the page break preview. Okay, let's see. Let's just drag this thing down a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna create a little bit of uh, this stuff here. Right, and we're going to make, um, whoops, just extra space, right, in case the operator and or uh, supervisor decide out there when they're checking this product out that there's some other checks that should be done and this form should be used for, okay? So then they would manually put here what that other check is and continue to do it. This form would then be returned to uh, whoever's managing it, right? And that individual will update this form so that that new check is permanent in, permanently in there, okay? So let's say, for example, uh, somebody might, um, might uh, manually put, hey, you know what? We really should check to make sure that the liner is not cut through, okay? You know, the, the die is not cutting too, three, too deeply, and the supervisor and operator say, hey, you know, that's a check we do that's not on this checklist, right? So they would manually write this in here and then do their little thing, right? Check it off as okay. And uh, and this form would find its way back to some point in the workflow where the protocol is for some individual to pick up this form and notice that there's a change, right? All right, so you might say here, form changed, right? And you might say, you know, yes or no here, okay? And uh, so this individual, if he saw a yes here, manually written, he say, okay, he looked for the change and say, okay, that liner is cut through, should uh, be a permanent one. And then ultimately, uh, you know, it'll be, it'll come out printed that way, which brings up another subject, okay? So now you have accountability, you have checks, you have two people looking at this thing. You have room for other checks to evolve this sheet. It's in Excel so that you can manipulate it and print it out. And you have a way of communicating that a form has changed, right? All right. Now, the other thing is um, um, I'm not a proponent of printing out a bunch of forms and making a bunch of copies, okay? You might want a few, a few copies of this out on the floor or in your all in a supervisor's office in a pouch or something like that just a small handful so that somebody could quickly grab it or somebody could put it inside a jacket or whatever right but because this form and many others that I develop are continuously evolving forms I like to print them out on demand make if there, a change happens I make the change and I'm not worrying about having to wean through or shred you know, a hundred pieces of printed paper because I had already printed them out. So print them out in small batches, if at all. Print them out on demand. Uh, you saw the other stuff, and uh, I hope this was a little bit helpful. If you have any questions, guys, um, do me a favor and post it on the forum at Flexo Exchange, uh, and I'll be happy so that everybody can see it and everybody can benefit from the questions. All right. I hope this helped out. Uh, DSM. <laughs> Take care, guys. Have a good one.